and loving memory of my beloved sister Lola, July 12th, 1958 to December 30th, 2011. Written by Greg Prescott, MS, founder and skipper of In5D.com, the hottest esoteric, metaphysical, and spiritual news on the net. Narrated by Rock and Larry Locken. Some cultures celebrate the death of a loved one instead of mourning for them, which makes a lot more sense than the grieving process. But it is easier said than done when it involves the loss of a family member or someone close to you. As evidenced by my many near-death experiences, crossing over to the other side is painless and often occurs before the body is officially deceased, which alleviates any fear while promoting a sense of warmth, comfort, and love. Most people who have a near-death experience are often greeted by deceased family members after they follow the tunnel toward the light although it is not time for them to be officially reunited with their loved ones. These are the people who bring back the eternal message of love for us. There is no more pain for our loved ones as they join their family and soul groups on the other side. Most people who have a near-death experience truly wish for us not to grieve for any for them because they are safe and loved. If anything, they would want us to be happy for them, knowing that in time, we will all be reunited. In the meanwhile, the process is much more difficult on this side of the veil. For this incarnation, we will no longer be able to hug or talk or physically be around our loved ones, which creates a void of emptiness that is irreplaceable. What many of us fail to realize is that we are all on this time schedule that we agreed upon in our soul contracts. When we were on the other side, it didn't really seem to matter when we passed because we knew that we would return to source, our soul groups, and the unconditional love that we were feeling when we made our contracts. Besides time, is non-existent on the other side. So there is very little difference between 23 years or 5,000 years. It is just a number. I recently wrote an article after having an amazing psychic consultation with Sean Cohen. I didn't write everything I was told in that particular article, but close friends know the rest of the story. Sean mentioned she saw the number three in regard to my sister Lola, meaning she wasn't sure if Lola had three days, weeks, or months to live. As it turned out, Lola passed exactly three months after my sister Tara first visited Lola when she became seriously ill. My message to you from my psychic reading by Sean Cohen, additionally in this reading, my paternal grandfather mentioned that my sisters and I should not only follow the light when we pass, but also the smell of my grandmother's pierogies. That statement was specifically directed for Lola, but I couldn't write it that way in the article. I made pierogies for dinner on the evening of her death. I also received a message from Lola's boyfriend who died in the car accident. He said, tell Lola, there is no reason to mourn. He added a lot more, but this is how people view death on the other side. They don't want us to be sad because sadness isn't part of their loving existence on the other side. For example, even when a near-death experience involves having a spouse and children on this side of the veil, people still do not want to return to this lifestyle after experiencing the unconditional love on the other side. Those who have experienced a near death are constantly reminding us that I'm okay on the other side. Please don't worry about me. One of my friends on Facebook used Sean's services and stated the following, quote, 
And when the time comes, you have a friend in Sean Cohen who can tell you that your sister is doing wonderful now. Thank you, Greg, for posting about Sean on your website. She helped me to connect with my mom, dad, and brother. Sean helped to provide the needed closure for my sister in regard to her relationship with her deceased boyfriend. Lola had me retell this reading to her time and time again. I was assured by my grandfather that Lola would hold on until January 9th, 2012 for me to be able to fly out to visit her. But free will always takes precedence. Every night before I went to sleep, I connected with Lola's higher self and told her not to hang on for me and that it was all right to pass on to the other side whenever she was ready. More than my own selfish needs, I wanted her to be without pain and in the arms of loved ones on the other side. While the sands of time may seem to erase some of the experience we have created with our loved ones, they are all recorded in the Akashic Records to be relived during our life. Review when we pass over to the other side. In this scenario, we view our life in regard to how we made a difference to the people who we encountered throughout our journey. Then we view our life through their eyes. Santos Bonacci said something that will always stay with me. He stated, and of course I'm paraphrasing, from the second the sperm fertilizes the egg, we begin dying. We were alive before that moment. In the end, there is no separation. We truly are spiritual beings having a human experience. In closing, it must be said and lovingly noted that Lola Helen Prescott was a loving soul whose heart was as big as her smile. As an amazing artist, Lola's style reflected her own creative perspective, which was absolutely unique. Her love for animals and nature equally matched her love for humanity. She has made a huge positive difference in the lives of many people and is dearly missed by all. Thank you, Greg, for sharing that story. And on behalf of Greg Prescott and the entire staff at N5D, we hope this article of pure unconditional love and heavy heartfelt wisdom helps you on your spiritual journey. Please check out the links below. Namaste.